In this video, I'm going to quickly cover some of the updates that Creality have made to the firmware on the Sonic Pad. My Sonic Pad Basic and Intermediate series were all made with a previous version of the firmware, so you may find that some of the screens you see are different to what I show in the videos. If you haven't seen my Sonic Pad series, then all of the videos can be found in the playlist up here and in the description below. This video will cover all of the differences from my video series as of September 2023, which is when I'm recording. I'll try to show everything that's changed, but there are a lot of new features and many of them are going to need to be covered in a separate video. As those individual videos are released, I will link to them up here so that you can jump straight to them. If you're putting off updating because of some of the internet horror stories, then I've made a video to show how I do it to make sure that I don't lose any of my printer settings when I do. The latest firmware version at the point of making this video is 1.0.6.51.139. If you have a different firmware version, then obviously there may be some slight differences. On the main front page, there are no changes. The same is true of the move, preheating and print pages, so we'll just skip through these. On the control page, you'll now find movement parameters, which has moved from the configure page. You may see console or macro or both, depending if you have them turned on in the settings, but then that hasn't changed. The configure page is where the changes really start. In place of the movement parameters menu, which has moved, we now have camera control. This page gives you some further camera options, which you'll need to configure if you want to use Creality Cloud to remotely control your printer. The other settings page also has a number of changes with AI detection, laser engraving mode, and auto lighting screen for error reporting. AI detection is where you set up Spaghetti Detective, which is a clever feature that uses the camera image to detect a print failure. Laser engraving mode is for if you want to use a Creality laser engraving attachment. And I believe that auto lighting screen for error reporting simply turns the screen on when there's an error. When we look at the advanced options page, we find a few more changes. We now have an IoT switch. IoT stands for Internet of Things. And all we really need to know at the moment is that you need to have this switched on if you want to use Creality Cloud. Hot end PID calibration is now nozzle PID calibration, but it works the same way. And we now have a way to see if our limit switches are working with the limit sensors option. We also have an emergency stop confirmation toggle to make sure that accidentally hitting the stop button doesn't ruin your day. As you may have found, if you've tried to follow my e-steps or rotational distance guide, the extrusion calibrations page has also changed. All Creality have done here is given you the option to select a different extruder if you've changed the one on your Creality machine. You can now switch between the Sprite and Marque extruder setup and you'll get a different figure for rotational distances if you do. You can also change the reduction ratio if you know that your extruder has a different one. When it comes to tuning rotational distances, you just follow the exact same processes in the video, but just select your extruder and ratio before starting. If you're using one of the default machines with no changes, then you shouldn't need to change anything here. As far as menu options go, that's all that you'll see that's different, but there are a lot of added features that won't be so obvious. Creality have added more default printer profiles, including their seemingly forgotten son, the Ender 3 Neo, which I know will help a lot of my viewers. Also, Creality have updated all of the individual elements that make up a full clipper installation, so they are now apparently right up to date and not a few generations behind, which was the case before. This means that we have all of the latest clipper features, including things like Exclude Object, which I know a lot of people have been waiting for. You can use more printer models with Creality Cloud, and you can now see your video feed from your camera on the app or website. More languages are now supported, and you can also skip through the self-test procedure when setting up a new printer if you want to. There are improvements to many other areas like manual leveling logic, which basically just means that they no longer use the mesh when manually leveling after you've created a mesh, which was an issue before. And laser engraving is better supported with more compatibility with Lightburn software. Another feature that a lot of people have been waiting for is the ability to do mid print filament changes, which is now fully supported when using the M600 command. You may not love the way Creality have implemented the M600 command, but as with most things with Clipper, there are ways to tweak things to your liking. There are lots of other little bits of tidying up that I won't bore you with, but all in all, I think it's great to see that Creality are trying to fine tune the Sonic Pad and fix any issues that users are having, as well as bringing new features. Considering that the Sonic Pad has been around for about a year now, I think that's some pretty good product support considering what we usually get in the 3D printing world. As I've said, I've got some more Sonic Pad videos coming soon to help you use some of these new features. So hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out. In the meantime, click over here for some more videos you might like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.